His ears home at home, Stander, and his brother Horatio. Well, most people call me Brian, but... <laughs> Horatio, he's the smart one. And today we're going to do a bit of cheese making. I'm going to leave it to the expert to get us started here. Yep, we're going to, uh, if you can see in the background, I've got some milk that's been sitting out now um, since this morning. It's late afternoon now. And we're gonna I was started. milking the cows down at the <laughs> grocery store. They didn't like that too much. But someday we're going to have our own milk cow. Yep. Just for now, we can buy it straight from the store. Yep. And you can make cheese from store-bought milk. It just can't be ultra-high temperature processed um, milk. So most of the normal stuff you get is just homogenized and pasteurized. And what that does, it kills all the bacteria that's in the milk. And so when we make cheese, we have to put... Um, the bacteria, the the cultures is what it's called, back in, because we could all use a little culture. Yeah, especially Homer. <laughs> but uh, you made me get whole milk. Was it okay that I got milk without holes? Yeah, or, that's all right. <laughs> no, or is that a different way of spelling it? No, whole, W-H-O-L-E. Not no. O-H-O-H-O-L-E. There you got it. That's <laughs> like something you put in the ground. When you need to put something else there. Yes, sir. So, uh, the recipe we're doing today is going to be an Emmental, which is... Wait, a... wait. This is an Umberto special. We're naming this cheese after Umberto. He's our new brother. Well, he doesn't know that's his new name yet, except <laughs> I think I called him at once. He liked about as much as Horatio. Uh -huh. But, uh... This is going to be an Umberto Emmentaler. All right. Because today Umberto. is his birthday, and we want to name after him Umberto Emmentaler because he was named way back in the 60s. Yeah, something like that. And we just named it today. Sorry, Emmentaler. <laughs> so it's Emmental, which most people would refer to as a Swiss cheese. It's going to have holes in it and all that fun stuff, so... We should uh, get going. I knew I got the right. That's why you had me get the holy that, milk. It's not holy yet, but it'll be holy after it's cheese. And be blessed by a clergyman. Oh, okay. We not that kind of holy. A different kind of holy. <laughs> yes. Man, you're messing me up with all these uh, homophones. Homophones, something like that. <laughs> yeah. All righty then. So we're going to get started. And there you go. All right, there we go. It's a birthday cheese for Umberto. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. No, don't, don't torture us with the singing. All right. <laughs> Here you go. Quit being cheesy. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Oh, and overall, Dave, I was thinking about you today when I got dressed. And I put my strap on backwards because I know it drives you nuts, too. <laughs> All right, here we go. So since Homer isn't going to be here for the whole cheese making process, because it's a long process. and he'll, it still that long. He'll, he'll probably be heading home and uh, getting some sleep before this is done. Um, the cheese making is going to be going till tomorrow. That's how long this is going to <laughs> take. Definitely ain't staying up that long. <laughs> so uh, um, there's a lot of pauses. You don't have to work the whole time, but... I'm going to guide Homer with how to how to get started. And first you want to take this ginormous pot over here and put it in the sink. My 10-gallon pot. Now you can do this well, on actually, the stove. Ratios. If you want, you can do this on the stove. But we have propane um, burners. And that gives you a really hot fire. And I don't want to scorch the milk. So we're going to do it a more gentle way by heating the pot with hot water. So... I'm gonna have Homer start pouring the milk in the, into the pot. We're doing an eight gallon batch, so we need to start with eight gallons of milk. Now, if you got an eight gallon, why you got a 10 gallon pot? Well, you could probably maybe squeak 10 gallons in there, but the problem with that is you don't have much room to stir, and there's a lot of stirring that goes on with cheese making. I'm stir crazy, they say. Now, does it matter I'm beating this milk up when it goes nope. in there? Don't got now, a more gentle light? No. Now, uh, I'll show you a trick that I like to use most times, but I'm not going to do this trick with all of these jugs because 
If you do, <laughs> what are you doing back there, goofball? Making sure I got it all. <laughs> so, to make the process go faster, oh, you can pull out I, the psycho I, knife, I, I, and then you turn the jug upside down and jab a hole in the bottom, and then it just comes out in a big stream instead of the gurgle, gurgle, gurgle. And you see, we started at the same time, but mine is already empty and his is still working. Now, Never is, you can still use my jug. Yeah, the reason we're not doing that with all of them, and I just did this one for an example, is because we're going to do maple syrup later in the year, and these work great for catching sap in the from the trees when we do maple syrup. So. Got to warm up a little bit for the trees to start letting their sap go up. Yep. There it's you a go. cold one today. Yeah, we called old Umberto, better brother. He's down in Texas. He's telling us it's supposed to get down to 20 down there in Texas next week. And we said, well, shucks, it ain't even 20 here yet. We might catch up with you getting cold. And didn't he say something like that? Something like that. He said they only got it for one day, and we've got the next 10 days that are like below... 10 degrees a lot of the days. So. We're 10 times as good with our temperatures here in Michigan. Yep. So. Um, we didn't catch this on video, but you want to have your hands impeccably clean when you're doing this. Because the, that's right, the, uh, you're not touching anything. The, <laughs> I'm the, touching the milk. No, you're touching the jug. <laughs> oh. Uh, so, don't do that. <laughs> so. <laughs> Anyway, you want your hands and all of your equipment to be sanitized. I use, um, I just use distilled white vinegar for sanitization. You can boil everything if you want, not the milk, but you can boil all your equipment if you want. And you can, um, you can also use a bleach spray, but I usually just use vinegar. Bleach will kill more stuff than vinegar will, but vinegar usually does a good enough job. It's a little harsher on your clothes and yeah. your hands, too. Now, I'm sure glad this is uh, kid-friendly stuff, because talking about spraying vinegar and boiling your equipment could really get me into some bad trouble there with my jokes. Mm -hmm. So... So this is the boring part of emptying all the milk in. And then we got to warm that up yep. or something. And now uh, we have to get this milk warmed up to yeah. our first target temperature, warm which is... Warm milk will make you sleep. Warm milk will make you reap. So our first target temperature is going to be uh, between 90 and 92 degrees. Now last night I turned up the water heater... So this water will get super hot. I think I gauged it at 170 degrees when I had this running. It's so hotter than a hot I've tub. got the water going. You can see the steam coming off of it maybe. And I plugged the sink before we put the pot in and now I'm just putting water in the sink around the pot to warm everything up. And once that's done, we will come back and show you the next step. Thank you, ratio. You're welcome. Some folks call it Brian. So, I have this here probe thermometer down in the milk. Uh, it was at 55 when I first got it because I had the milk sitting out at, um, at room temperature all morning. And we got the sink pretty well full around the bucket with steaming hot water. Now, I want to mention room temperature for many other folks is a lot warmer than room temperature for Horatio. He keeps this joint a little bit cool. It's like 65 in here mm -hmm. versus many people keep it warmer. So if you're doing this, it might come up a little warmer than 55 just in the morning part. Yeah, you could even start with cold milk if you want. It just takes a lot longer to warm up. So I set it out so it'll warm up faster. And we're at 66 now. And when we get to 90 degrees, we'll come back. All right, so we're still waiting on this to get warm. While we're doing that, I'm going to have Homer come over here well, and get you. started. You. First thing he's going to do is spray his hands off with uh, vinegar. This is just pure distilled white vinegar. That works a lot better right side up than upside down or you get air in the hose. A lot better that way than in my eyeball. Ah, rub that in real good. Dry your hands off. I don't got no cuts. Usually this burns about now if I did. Yeah. Haven't been working hard enough. So there's a towel right here to dry your hands on. <laughs> it's 
So what we need to do is dilute calcium chloride. I got diluted ones. <laughs> I'm using, it's called Extra Crunch. There's another name brand called Pickle Crisp. And it's just some granules in here of calcium chloride. But we need that to dilute. stuff, I put some calcium chloride down in the RV to help <laughs> suck some of the liquid out. I assume this does some, something to reduce the humidity. Nope, that is to replace the calcium uh -huh. that is damaged in the milk when it's um, pasteurized and homogenized. It. Oh, it got damaged before it even got here. <laughs> now we got to fix her up. This is a fixer upper. Mm -hmm. So I got to do this. So, yep, open that up. And you want to put a teaspoon of that Ooh. into one of these jars I set I'll up here for you. i a couple of my marbles. Make sure you get the one teaspoon one. I had to learn this the hard way. That's got the one TSP. If there's a B in it, it's way too big. Yep, three Don't times. Don't do that size. with your salt. Three so, times. Yeah, level that off once you get it. Uh, kind of like the go. plane I'm when they get I'll show you what these granules look like if it'll focus on it. You see there's just little granules in there. Edgar, if Homer stop shaking. Put that in there. One teaspoon each one, jar. Nope, no, no, just that one jar. The other jar is for the rennet. And ah. then you need two teaspoons of rennet. We're using liquid animal rennet. Do they make vegetable rennet? And you can see right here it says one time strength. If it says two times strength, you would only use half as much. You sure so. you wouldn't use fourth as much? No, nope. use, <laughs> use two twice, teaspoons. Half, twice. <laughs> two teaspoons, two teaspoons in, in the other jar. jar. Yes, sir. And uh, now you folks know what it's like working with Homer. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't told me I didn't work hard enough already, and now he's making fun of having to work with me. There you go, that's two TSPs. Two TSPs, and now pour some of that distilled. Don't <laughs> don't lick that. You might not like the taste of that much. All right. Oh, and to answer your early question, yes, there is vegetable rennet. All right. Does that make you have some vegetarian cheese? Uh, I think some. People who have um, more plant-based diets still consume milk and cheese. You definitely wouldn't if you're a vegan, but I'm not an expert on that. I'd say the vegans, they don't do that because the milk stuff and having the animals pinned up. But gotcha. I just wondered if the... I guess, I don't know. What is rennet, actually? Isn't it something to do with the baby calves? Uh, the animal rennet comes from the stomach of a calf, yes, and um, and back in the old days they used to uh, they used to take and put the uh, after they butchered a calf they would take that stomach and dehydrate it and they would just cut off a little square about one inch big for your gallon of milk and use that for your uh, cheese curdling rennet. You know something I figured out while we were sitting here? Uh, I want to say videotaping, but I know it's just taking a video now that it's on some electronic super duper. Yep, there's memory. no tape anymore. <laughs> there's no tape. <laughs> but anyway, I recognize in my efforts to try to become ambidextrous and practicing and all that stuff, it don't make it very easy for you to videotape from that side. <laughs> uh, I know it's not videotape. To record it to an eight track. <laughs> so that one's pretty cloudy. Yep, we're gonna have to stir that till it's clear. Oh my goodness. I'm going to have to do it right-handed, too, after all that work. And trend still, yep, the granules take a little while to break up and dissolve. So. It's a breakup song that we got to get it all stirred all day long. Now, while he's doing that, I'm going to come over here and check our temperature. Now, that says 91, but I have this here ladle, a big giant That's ladle. That's fancy ladle. And I'm going to stir that around because, of course, cold stuff settles and hot stuff rises. So when we stir that, you see that temperature's drop back down to 86. So we're almost there. 88. We're almost there. We need to be between 90 and 92. So 
it looks to me like he's got that uh, cleared up so we're good there and now that that's let's check the bottom here yeah that's good and clear so we can put the calcium chloride you didn't mix those up did you I didn't mix them up. <laughs> we can put the calcium chloride directly into the pot here oh my man we're gonna in. fix you up because they broke you like a truck <laughs> So the calcium chloride, it's not really that big of a deal if it goes in, like dribbled in, or just poured all at once, because you can stir that in. But the rennet, however, you want to make sure that you're stirring it well when you put it in. We're not ready for that yet. Um, you want to stir that in really well. Um, but uh, the rennet kind of sets things up like um, jello. It makes the whole vat of milk turn into a solid curd and then you cut that into smaller curds in expressway and that's how you make cheese so we're gonna expressway do... i drove on the expressway the other day. <laughs> <laughs> well, i was going about 70 40 11 miles an hour on the expressway not that, is that <laughs> not that kind of expressway oh <laughs> express meaning to push and way being w h -E oh, to see how heavy it is <laughs> no. that's like a henway no w h e what, it... what's a henway about two or three pounds. <laughs> Gee, I didn't see that coming. All right. Expressway. So, W-H-E-Y. W-H-E-Y. Like Kurtz and Way with old Mother Hubbard. Yes, sir. And it's not old Mother Hubbard, is it? It's little, little Miss, Miss Muffet. Little Miss Muffet. Oh, something <laughs> like that. So we'll come back when we get up to uh, go the right temperature on the and go on the next, <laughs> next step. So we got up to 91 degrees so Man, far. Man, it took some time. We had to get me to put some more water up in there. Yep, we had to change the water out once and then add a little bit of more a little bit more hot water down to the sink to uh to get it to go all the way up to 91. But uh Homer's going to come over here and take the uh take the thermometer attachment there off. Just take the whole clip and everything okay. off. Boy, it's a good thing I wasn't seeing a pediatrician when they had things like this. <laughs> I don't know that my 98.6 could handle getting checked back in the day. Yeah, that wouldn't be much fun. And just then, set this down. yep, just set that down anywhere. And then now that is heavy. It's got eight gallons of milk. It's about eight gallons or eight pounds per gallon. So you're looking wow, at almost 64. 64, 62, 56. Yeah, something like that. About 64 pounds plus the weight of the pot, which is another five or 10 pounds. But That's look at right, that I got big it. beefy muscle there. He's going to pick that up, put it on a counter. All right. Hopefully I don't leave nothing sitting here when I get there. Now mm -hmm. this counter right here, right? Nope. The other side. The other side. Because <laughs> I was about still... dexterity getting yeah. me again. <laughs> when it comes out of the water, it's going to be heavier than it is when it's in the water. I too. didn't get off the bottom yet, and it was heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the don't camera hurt can yourself. handle it. So this is probably why most people do uh, two gallon or four gallon batches instead of eight gallon batches. They had to give me the hard one to start now. Mm -hmm. So So now we need to add... Our cultures and we have propionic shermanii holy and smokes that, that is... sounds like that movie with the where they got the crazy board and all that stuff coming after oh them. you think so jumanji <laughs> or something like that <laughs> shermania what the heck is that is propionic that sounds like something make a plane go up in the air <laughs> that's the culture <laughs> <Before> they had <laughs> jets that's the culture that you use to make the bubbles in the cheese or the eyes in the cheese. Oh, okay. And then we have thermophilic culture here. And that is Sound the culture legs. that you can't hardly read that. that uh, yeah. Anyway, so we need a half teaspoon of each of those, but only do the thermophilic first. All right. And sprinkle it around there. Now, this half TSP, not TSBP. Right. Man. It's hard to get up in there. Thermophilic makes it sound like it has thermal, something to do with heat. You're right. Now, there's mesophilic culture and thermophilic culture. The mesophilic is... The uh, period when some dinosaurs growed, right? No, that's not quite right. That's, uh, 
Thermophilic. Uh, level that off. Don't don't have it be have that as level as you can get it there. Now that ain't very much going in. Mesophilic and thermophilic. So uh, thermophilic handles higher heat. That's good. Sprinkle it all over the place. Not all over. Not all over the place. All over the top all of the milk. All over the top of the milk. <laughs> <laughs> you knew where I was going yep, with that. I saw that coming a mile away. It looks like sprinkles on my ice creams. You think so? Well, yeah, a little so bit yellow. Really. Yellow sprinkles. Yeah, you can see a couple of spots, but it's kind of hard to. So this has to do yeah. with the heat and the mesophilic. That can handle a higher heat. Okay, mesophilic then, is a mess when yep. it gets hot. And then now he's going to put a half teaspoon of. Do I need to lick this off? Oh, that's probably not a good idea, but Should... you do want to wipe it off with that towel just so we don't mix our cultures up. All right, now this is a special counter cleaning one that stays only on the counter we don't mess it up with other stuff and right. only only after we what's that disinfective it yeah sanitized towel sanitized there after we got distilled with the vinegar mm -hmm. so i cleaned her up good all right now you get the propionic shermania shermania not the yellow one and the jumanji uh. jumanji huh yeah, that was a funny movie. They got chased by stuff all over the place. And sprinkle and that, that on. Enough. Yep, that one's good. Same do we like just, mess it around on the top. Sprinkle it around like you did the other one. That's much harder to see than the yellow one. Whoa, man. Now, I don't know if you're paying attention overall, Dave. But I've been switching my breech straps back oh. and forth just for you. <laughs> I didn't notice that. You know, that's like that Mel Brooks movie where that feller had the uh, stuff moving back and forth on his face. Wasn't that Mel Brooks? I don't remember. He had like a mole or something. It was The mole was all over. That's when my straps, my breeches go. Someday you're going to have to pick up some funny from me. <laughs> <laughs> well maybe not all right so all we're gonna do now is just wait five minutes for that to hydrate to so soak up some of the milk into it speaking of hydrating we might get us a bubbly water in the in between the, the, the next thing so that i won't be so parched all right so we got five minutes to wait we'll be back after that all right so our five minutes is up all you gotta do is stir that in real nice now you said no when you stir you want it to be i'm going to show you real quick you want to go top to bottom like this but don't break the surface because you don't want to mix a bunch of uh air in with your cheese well, so. plus we just had to put that jumanji stuff in there to fix the milk and you don't want me breaking it but this uh little learning opportunity reminds me the good time this might be a longer cheese making video than you're accustomed to part of it is because horatio is helping me to learn a little bit and he's being real patient with me because he's the smart one and he's helping me learn all this jazz so it's going to take a little longer and he also made me use we were talking i was funning about distilled vinegar but he also used distilled water and i forgot to help prompt him to do why did we do the distilled water all right we did distilled water just to make sure that there are no bacteria or anything in the water that we're using to dilute the stuff because this milk is a perfect growing medium for bacteria and if it's bad bacteria it'll grow in there too that's why we're spraying our hands down with vinegar to kill any bacteria and that's why we are keeping everything impeccably clean i, I suspect before they got all fancy with these stomometer and probes and all that jazz Probably we lost one or two taste testers in the cheese making process. <laughs> well, actually, in the old days, they just used to use their arm to stir it with. <laughs> but we like to be a little more careful. Maybe and, they didn't have a deep pot like this because Homer yeah. got some long arms and that'd be tough. <laughs> I saw a picture of a guy holding another guy by the feet while he was in the vat with both arms stirring the whole thing. Oh, the that, feet, not like, the seat. <laughs> oh, not the seat, the feet. So... It looks like that's pretty well stirred in, and now we just need to cover this up and wait for 10 minutes. You can just hang minutes. that off the side. Oh, on the inside? Or yep, the... and like that. All right. There you go. And, and the then top. I'll grab the lid, and we'll cover it up, and we got to wait for 10 minutes, and that 10 minutes is going to allow that um, culture to grow in there. Topping it off. <laughs> Topping it off and going to wait. All right. 
So our 10 minutes is up. Yeah, I've been running around just to waiting for it to get all <laughs> finished. And I think a ratio called me the Energizer Bunny was going to take a battery out of me. Mm -hmm. He's got plenty of energy, that's for sure. So what's next? So now we need to add the rennet. Wait, 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 wait. Why don't you buy it instead of rent it? <laughs> rent it. Oh. R E N N E. But I can't do anything yep. you told me. Hose your hands down. Until I wash my hands up. Rub that in real good. Again, no cuts were handled in these hands because I've been keeping them nice and smooth mm -hmm. and soft for cheese making. All right, so now. I think we'll work together on this. I'll stir this. All right. And I'll have you drizzle the rennet in. Drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. Now it's important that once you put this rennet in, you can go a lot faster than that. It's four shizzles. Uh, anyway, it's important that you don't stir this for more than a minute. Because um, it'll start to set up and then you'll mess your curd all up. So. So, all right, Homer's taking that over. I'm gonna stir to take care of my energy. I'm gonna stir. You see how he's going really? from the bottom of the pot and then lifting it up so it gets everything incorporated all throughout. Never breaking the surface, brother. I wonder I how Humberto is doing today on his birthday. I hope he's having a good day. It's his birthday cheese. Mm-hmm. Cheese. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to take All right, a picture. So that's enough. Um, and we want to still the pot, which you basically just, we, while it's moving we use around in circles. Water, we're distilled go, vinegar and distilled the pot. Yep, something like that. <laughs> so we're going to take this out and then we're going to cover it up. And we'll can, wait 40 minutes this time, roughly 40 minutes, can, while that sets up. Can you imagine being in a room with Homer sitting still for 40 minutes? <laughs> it's going to be fun. I bet Horatio will run me off here shortly. I think we'll be all right. So we'll come back in 40 minutes and see if it's set. Okay, so it has been 40 minutes. So we'll stop the timer. Homer's cleaning up his hands there. And we will open up the lid here. Now you want to check for a clean break. And what you do is you just stick your finger in there straight down. And then you lift up and it should spread open and break open. So now do I got to use my pinky finger like you's using? Or can I use that whatever finger? Whatever finger you want to use. Or that finger. I don't want to try any more fingers. I get in trouble. So stick it down in and then pull up. Gently, yes. Like hooking into the... Yep, like fish just, mouth. Just like that. Just like that. Here we go. See how that broke? Yeah. The on your finger, there's some clumps, but there's like water between them. So that's a pretty good clean break. We're um, gonna call it good. I'm gonna check two. Here, spray my hand with vinegar, will you? Psst, not my eyes. Thank All you. All right. You're gonna do so, special. I want to do it just so I can feel it. I think that's a little too soft. We're going to wait another 10 minutes and see what happens. We'll All come right. back to you in 10 minutes. We'll be back after this break. Homer's going to be tied back. I mean, uh, duct taped back to the chair while we wait. All right. So, in 10 more minutes. Uh, we'll probably cut the curd whether it's all the way good or not. Try that again, see if you get a clean break in a different spot. Yeah, that looks good enough. All right, so now we're gonna cut the curd, and what you're gonna want to do is take your curd knife there, and you go straight up and down all the way to the bottom, and just do three-eighths of an inch apart all the way across that. I see. Then you go three-eighths of an inch apart across it that way, and then you'll come in, instead of straight up and down, you come in at a 45 degree angle and cut that and then that so that we're breaking basically all this up. You I'll write it down. You could also use a whisk to do this, but unfortunately I don't have my ginormous whisk here. So I'm just going to cut that apart. 
So I got a question. Yes, sir. This ain't quite cheese yet. No, it's more like, almost like thick yogurt right now. Thick yogurt? I'm not sure I'm getting three-eighths done. That's all right. We'll Since cut it up with our small balloon whisk that we have here when we start stirring later. So would it be fair to say this is premature cheese? Um, sure, we could go with that. So am I prematurely cutting the cheese? <laughs> I tried that one time. Didn't turn out so good for Homer's britches. Oh, okay. So we're going to keep cutting this cheese, and we will come back once it's done. All right, so he's just about done doing the straight up and down cuts, and I want to show you what happens. Homer, reach over there and grab that uh, that ladle. Now you told me. Scoop some of that up. Gently. Everything's just see how it's just long, long, like square columns in there. So yep. dump that back out. It almost looks like extreme cheese. Yeah, I guess it kind of does. And you can set the ladle back down. If I lift it down, now way. come in at 45 degrees ish along ish. there to cut. Now you got to, real precise to cut so the I start right there. Yep. And what am I doing exactly besides cutting the cheese prematurely here? And you're cutting the uh, uh, curds into small pieces because we need to get the whey out of the curds to make cheese. And um, if it's in big pieces, not as much whey can come out as if it's in small pieces. So we're just breaking it up into small pieces. Uh, we'll get pretty close with what we're doing here, and then we'll stir it and get the uh, get the balloon whisk going to break the bigger pieces up because cutting it like this you can almost never get it all perfect so. oh so using a balloon whisk is not going to be so precise so all that fretting and frowning and worrying i did while i was this ain't about dexterity got my <laughs> armpit all up in your face <laughs> thank so, goodness uh, you got a shirt on this time Huh? I said, thank goodness you got a shirt on this time. Oh, yeah. Homer's known for wearing his overalls there without a shirt on. Look just like an old hillbilly steady gander. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. All right. So you got this pretty well cut. And we're going to let this sit for about five minutes or so um, just to let the, cur the little pieces firm up a little bit before we stir. All right. And then we're going to have to stir for what something like 30 minutes here so. Oh my goodness. I hope you ate your Wheaties this morning. That's going to be some, some stirring, but at least I won't be sitting still. <laughs> get stuck in these pants. I might never get out. I had to wear overalls for the rest of my life. <laughs> now, wouldn't that be something? That'd be something. Nice. I got them all nice and straight, and we're going to sit go. and wait for the curd. Do I got to cover this bag up? No, we'll just wait about five minutes. And we'll be all good right, to go. we'll see you in five. All right, so it has been about five minutes. You can see how the whey and the curds are starting to separate. Yeah. And um, you can also see that we have some some bigger pieces can and some I smaller stir pieces. Can I show them there, yep. good folks? And we'll stir that up. Yep. you got to stir this now for 40 minutes. 40 minutes? <laughs> I can't even sit still that so, long. What makes you think I... Whoa, there's some longer... see all longers. those big, long ones? Now, I put a, a balloon whisk over there so you can cut those up. Not, not that kind of balloon whisk. <laughs> so, what you can do, actually... Yes, sir. Is just stir around with this, like this, to cut those up into smaller pieces. While I stir with this. And then stir a little bit with the other one. You don't this have to do... This partner like trying to pat my head and rub my tummy at the same time. Somebody patted your head enough and got rid of most of the hair. <laughs> I would actually tap it, but you make me pour some vinegar. You don't need to have to clean up. So what we, you gotta do if I got cough? Uh, turn your head, cough. <laughs> A doctor told me that once and <coughs> we became real friendly. Yeah, I won't do the doctor thing. Well, good. Uh, I'm sure you've got both so, hands up there on that camera so, before I uh, cough again. <laughs> We're going to keep Homer busy doing this for 35, what was it, 40 minutes. 40 He's minutes. Stirring. We better set a um, timer. We will. You only need the whisk to cut up any big pieces. And the oh, other one can just keep moving it around. Kind of looking and, like cottage cheese. Yep, and be gentle with it, remember? Gentle. 
Easy peasy. So we'll be back in 40 minutes with a sore arm and a sad well, homer. I think my arm and my straps might fall off by then. <laughs> All this working. Mm hmm. All right, we'll be back. Homer's working hard. He's got to get rid of some lard. Oh, you're back. Well, the aim by dexterity thing I told you about been paying off. Now, Horatio told me not to stir it too hard, be gentle, and keep that didn't have to be so fast as I was doing it. Really just keeping it from settling out to the bottom. As you can see, those curds are looking much like cottage cheese with a little bit of whey. Now, I don't know why Miss Muffet would eat this stuff, but I suppose you might have used hungry. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this is really wearing me out. I'm tired. I had to get me a drink of water. I was stretching all the way across. Finally, Horatio gave me a break and he got me some water. But my and my dexterity, I've been doing it with my left hand and then my right hand. And I tried to do it with my foot, but Horatio told me no. I said I was going to kick its arms and change it from curd to cud. But uh, he wouldn't let me because he's afraid I'd get my socks stuck up in this ladle and never be the same. So, but fortunately, I got to go. So I'm not going to have to do the rest of this. I'm all saved worn out. Saved by the bell. Huh? Saved by the bell. Well, saved by the bell. Or a good excuse. I made one up. I had to work on it for a while. But I'm certain you're in good hands with Horatio here. He's going to take you through the rest of the cheese making process. So it probably won't take so long because I've been goofing off a lot. And uh, we really enjoy you hanging out with us. And I look forward to some cheese, my favorite part. And then I'll cut it. Oh, he's working so hard. <laughs> Homer's got to burn off some nard. He's been working for 17 minutes so far. The <laughs> longest darn 17 minutes in my life. I got to go because I'm getting old. I'm getting old. <laughs> All right, signing off. All right, so it's been 40 minutes of stirring, and the curds have gotten a lot smaller. I'll take you over and show you. So as we stir, you see how small those are? They're just a little smaller than large curd cottage cheese. So we're going to leave that like it is. And our next step is to stir this for 35 more minutes. But while we stir it, we need to gently heat it. It needs to go all the way up to 120 degrees um, from the 90 where it's at now. And uh, it needs to be stirred the whole time. So and it, the, the temperature needs to go up by roughly one degree per minute over the time that we need to go. So. Um, I'm going to move that back over to the sink with hot water and then we'll get the hot water in there and we'll see if it's if it's not heating fast enough then I will go ahead and put it on the stove and heat it a little faster but we will see how that goes. All right, so got the water going in there, and all we do is stir, 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 and we will stir it for another 30 minutes. Um, I'll set the thermometer back in here. Now, the thermometer I use is a digital probe thermometer. The great thing about this is I can put the probe in and set the temperature to any temperature I want it to set and like I said we're going to set it to 120 degrees Fahrenheit and once we get to 120 I'll put this probe in and then I can watch the temperature climb 
up to 120 and I'll watch the timer as I do and that will give me an idea of whether we're making our um, one degree per minute here so now that's set at 120 I'm gonna hook this here's a trick I learned a while back is I take a binder clip that's sanitized and I put it in there and fold one of the handles down then I can hold the probe down into the liquid into the curds and whey and stir it and I will have a steady readout of what the temperature is. Now that did cool down quite a bit while we were stirring it for that long. It's at 88 degrees now. Um, but we still need to get up to that target temperature of 120 over the next 30 minutes. So I'll set the timer for, I'm sorry, over the next 30, 35 minutes. So I will set 30 degrees in 30 minutes would be one degree per minute. So I will set the timer for 30 minutes and watch and see how the temperature is rising. If it's not going fast, I'll put it on the stove. So I'll be back. All right, all right, all right, all right. So we got to 120 degrees and it was in 29 minutes. And so now all we have to do, here's what we're looking at now. You can see that there are still curds. They're getting smaller and smaller. But it's mostly whey is what you see now because the curds are so small. So we just stirred it for um, about 30, 35 minutes while we brought it up to 120 degrees. And now I just have to take it off the heat so it doesn't get, I have hot water in the sink still. So I have to take it out of the sink so it doesn't get any hotter. And then um, stir it for another 30 minutes. So here we go. I guess I should also add that the reason we keep stirring it is because the curd is heavier than the whey. So if it just sits here, it's going to sink to the bottom and make a big thick cake at the bottom. But when we stir it, we keep that from happening. And the problem is, if we make a big cake, then the whey that's in, trapped inside the curds will not get pressed out. And um, over time and with the heat that we have in here the proteins in the milk or the curds um, those milk proteins in the curds uh, Shrink and tighten up and as they shrink and tighten up they squeeze the whey out of their pores So that's why we had to heat it so slowly so that um, if we heated it too fast then the outside would get a skin over it and it wouldn't let the um, way from the inside come out All right, so we have stirred this for another 30 minutes And we're done stirring And what I have set up here is the uh, Way that's going to be taken from the cheese the, the after we've strained the curds from the way that's really useful for you know baking bread using it for you know pancakes it kind of gives it a sourdough flavor you can also add it to smoothies and stuff like that so I want to capture most if not all of that way and you can also make ricotta cheese out of it which I might do that instead of just saving it for um, for breads and stuff but so what we need to do now is let this sit and it's gonna sit in the pan and remember earlier I was saying how if you don't stir it, the curd's going to settle down to the bottom. Well, now we want that to happen, and it'll make it easier for us to get the whey out of there. I have these two containers here set up so that I can pour the whey into there. I have the cheesecloth here that's soaking in um, distilled white vinegar. Um, that not only makes sure that it's clean and sanitary, but it also um, lets it be easier to peel the um, the cheesecloth off of the cheese once it's pressed and back behind me I don't know how well you can see it the reason these cupboard doors are open is because I have my cheese press set up back there um, there's actually a video that we have that I already put on it's just a quick little description of how I made the cheese press and how it works um, I kind of had to go big on the cheese press because the smaller one I had wouldn't get enough force to press a large wheel of cheese it would only do smaller like two pound four pound batches that are just a five or six inch mold and I use a bigger cheese form than that or cheese mold than that so anyway I have 
the cheese mold. I'm hoping this one will be big enough. If it's not, I have a bigger one that I can use. Um, but I'm setting this down in the way so that when I, I mean, like when the way's in here, it'll warm that up and it helps to keep the curd warm and helps it to knit together a little bit. So we're going to let this sit for five minutes or so, and then we'll come back and I will show you me um, straining the curds from the way. All right, so it's been uh, a little over five minutes, but I'm going to take this um, cheesecloth. I'm going to wring the extra vinegar out of it. So it's pretty dry. And then hopefully we will be able to put this over this thing here, this pot here. And I'm going to tie the corners together to keep it from falling in when I start pouring the curds away in. Tie those corners together under that handle and then tie these corners together under this handle and hopefully that will hold it and keep it from falling in. I think that'll be good. <clears throat> now, take this pot, slide it over here and start pouring. Try not to make too much of a mess here if I can help it. That is really heavy. And you see how mostly it's just the curd coming off. Because the I'm sorry, mostly it's just the whey coming off because the curds are down in the bottom. Now that that pot's pretty full, let's see if we can take this cheesecloth out. Now this is not actually cheesecloth, it is muslin, which is a little bit tighter weave and it doesn't fall apart as much as regular cheesecloth does. So we'll pick this up, let the weight come out. Now with regular cheesecloth, I wouldn't have to squeeze this to get the whey out because it would just fall right through because cheesecloth is so much more open weave than this. All right, I think that would be good for now. Move this over here. And move this over here. Out of the way. Now we'll put our cheesecloth in here. But before I do, I'm going to pull the cheese mold out, drop it down in there, and that way the curd will already be in the mold when I'm ready to go. Just kind of even that out. And now we'll pour the rest in here. Now it's not gonna all fit in that bowl, but I have so much whey, I'm not really gonna fret if I lose a little down the sink. Now we're getting down to the curds. Pull this up. Get the way out of there. We'll take that one out, and the rest of this can go down the sink. There's not all that much more, anyhow. Hope you can see that over there. Well, I don't know if this is all going to fit in this mold. I might have to switch to my other one. 
Mm, I think I'll be able to make it. Might have to press it a little bit with my hands to get it to go all the way down into the cheese form. So I'll have room for the follower. There's still a lot of whey in here. So if I can get some of that extra whey out, then make room for the last little bit of curd. Okay. So right out of the way. And now we have the curd in the cheese form. I'm gonna rinse my hands off and bring the camera over here so I can show you a little better. And I'll be right back. So there's the curd inside the cheese mold, or cheese form, whichever you prefer to call it. And now I'm gonna move this over and set it on the press. Undo our knots. All right. Now I'm gonna work around, try to get some of the wrinkles out. There aren't, I mean, there's no way to get them all out. And then we'll just fold the cheesecloth over the cheese. And then put our follower in. And this is what presses down on the cheese. And we'll line this up underneath the press. And then we'll set the press down onto the cheese form. You want to make sure you're centered on the cheese, otherwise, you'll have a lab sided cheese. Now I'm going to use about four pounds of water in this milk jug and I'm going to hang it from the arm of the press so that it presses down at a steady rate. And we're going to leave that there for about 15 minutes. And at that point, I'll come back and show you what to do. All right, so it's been 15 minutes, and now we're gonna pull this out, um, unwrap it, flip it over, rewrap it, and put it back in the press with slightly heavier weight. So I'll lift the press out of the way. And then we'll take this follower out. Try not to get way all over the place. So we'll wring that out into the catch pan. So we can pull this follower out. All right. We dump the way that came out. Now we're gonna see if we can pull this cheese out. And you have to be really gentle with this because the curds are not completely knit together yet. So I try to gather it up as evenly as I can and then hold the form. Let me pull the cheese out of the form. Gently pull the cheesecloth, or muslin in this case, off of the cheese. Ever so gently. If it were to break, I'm sure you could just put it back in. 
um, and press it the next stage. And the brake will probably heal. But if you can, try to get the cheese out all in one piece. This is the tricky part. Peel that off the bottom. And even it back out on the counter here. So we have a flat spot to set it. Flop it back over gently. Gather the cheesecloth back up. When you do that, it's going to settle a little bit, so it's kind of hard to get back in here real well sometimes. Oh, that went in pretty easily. Sometimes it squishes down a little bit, and that makes it hard to get it back in. So, that time, it wasn't hard to get in at all. And I got a big knot here in the stuff, a big wrinkle, so I'm going to kind of Distribute that out a little bit. Stretch this cheesecloth down. Or muslin, I should say. But stretch that down. Throw those little bits in there. And now we'll move it back into the press. Now I was talking earlier about the weight that we're pushing down on this. And I said I had four pounds. Of, uh, of water hanging from my press. That's gonna change a lot depending on the size of your cheese mold and how long the arm is on your press. And there's a lot of math that goes with that. Um, a lot of recipes will just say, use this size mold and do it, but I'm using an eight inch mold and I wanted three tenths of a pound of force uh, per square inch of surface and to get that I knew I did the calculations on how many square inches the surface of this cheese is and then I it's a eight inch diameter mold so the surface area would be pi r squared pi is 3.14 the radius is four inches and so I have 3.14 times 4 times 4, which is 48, 49, right around 50. And then I need 0 0.3 pounds, or about a third of that in weight. Um, and it's, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but that worked out to what the 4 pounds, 3 and a half or 4 pounds I put on there worked out to between uh, 18 and 20 pounds of force going down on that. And now for this next pressing, I'm gonna double it. Um, water's about eight pounds a gallon, I think it's like 8.1. Last time I used half a gallon on that end of my press. This time I'm gonna use a full gallon. And my arm multiplies that by roughly five. So this pressing, I have 40 pounds pressing down instead of 20. And we'll put that weight on there. And then make sure we're still centered and everything's good. And we are. And now that's going to stay in there for um, about half an hour this time. And that then we'll come back and flip it again and add some more weight to it. And the next pressing will be a lot longer. So. All right, I'll be back shortly. Okay, so our time's up for that pressing. Um, I zoomed out for this shot so you can see what's going on. I've got a, the arm for the cheese press goes into the cupboard and there's a hinge in there and I can just take the arm off um, when I'm done making cheese. So anyway, I just tie the weight onto the end of the arm here. And that allows to get this out of the way.
and then we will sanitize my hands with this distilled vinegar. And again, we'll pull the follower out. Maybe we'll get the whey out first off the cheesecloth. Pour that out of here. Slide that out of the way. So because this muslin is finer woven, it takes up a little more space between the follower and the cheese form, and that makes it really hard to get this follower out. In this case, I'm going to pull the whole thing out and then take the follower off. So that's knit a lot tighter now. Seems to be a little less fragile. Of course, I say that and watch me break it. But so the, the concept of moving up in weight as you press this for longer periods of time. It's similar to the heating it slowly is you don't want to press it so hard on the outside that the uh, inside can't let the whey out because you're pressing whey out with the weight. So we'll smooth that back down, flip it over again, and fill this back up. Pick it up, put it back in the form. Get our wrinkles out as best we can. Now with cheesecloth, I normally would fold it over but that just doubles the thickness here and since this is muslin um, and thicker i'm using the um, i'm not folding it over because it's already such a tight fit so we've got that in there move this real quick Back over to here wipe our counter off real quick Hold this back under the press. Put the press back down. All right, so this time we're gonna up it again. Instead of um, instead of having 40 pounds pushing down, we're gonna have 60 pounds pushing down. And that's gonna be a little tricky. Let's see if I can do it on camera. That was close. I almost dropped it. All right, so now we're going to let that go for two hours. I'm a little off kilter here. Let's see if I can straighten that out. Yeah, that's good. All right, so we'll come back in two hours. And what we have is eight pounds plus four pounds is 12 pounds times five is 60 pounds on the top of this cheese. And um, there are uh, roughly 50 square inches on the top of this cheese. So a little over one pound per square inch is pushing on it right now. And the next time we will up that another 50%, so it'll be a pound and a half. Oh, 
Okay, so it's been two hours for that pressing. So let's take the press up and then pull this out. Let's see what we got. We'll unwrap it, flip it one more time. And then it will go in the press for 12 hours. Um, this will be overnight, it'll be tomorrow. It'll be pretty late right now before we come back to it. And we'll get this all set up to go overnight for its last pressing. Tomorrow we'll take it out and we'll be able to, uh, sorry about that. We'll take it out tomorrow and we'll be able to put it in a salt water bath tomorrow. Or brine is what we refer to it as. So let's unwrap this and see what it looks like. It's pressed together much more firmly now. It's looking pretty darn good. Even out the wrinkles in the cloth. Pull it tight, straight as you can. follower on the reason you want as many wrinkles out as you can is those wrinkles give spots for mold to grow and although we can uh, wipe the mold off with vinegar or brine while it's aging it's still easier if you just don't have the, um, the little folds in the cheese to begin with so that's pretty good there. So, I don't know if you noticed before, but there's barely any whey that pressed out this time around. It'll probably be even less tomorrow. Um, even though we're increasing the weight, we've already got most of the whey out of the cheese already. So we'll get this in here. Get it squared up under the edge of the, or under the shaft of the press. Center it on the, under that shaft. And then drop it down. And what I'm doing here now, making sure that the shaft is as straight up and down as I can and that keeps it from that keeps the cheese from tipping um because otherwise it'll be really thin on one side and like thick on another so I'll just line that up as straight as I can get it and then I'll put the weights on it uh this time around I've got two gallons of water so 16 pounds, and then I'm gonna put that on the end of the shaft or end of the arm for the press. So that's times five. So that's 80 pounds of force that's coming down on this cheese for this press. So I'll get this hooked up and let it sit for 12 hours and come back tomorrow and pull it out, and then we can continue from there. Good morning, Homer. <laughs> Morning, Horatio. What in the heck? <laughs> Got a little prom get dressed this morning, <laughs> and to do it twice, and I still didn't quite get right. I'm ah, sure if you work at it, you can fix that up right. Well, you the way see, it's to be. I got this strand ball hooked up, and there was still a buttonhole in the button. I didn't know what to do with it. So, uh, anyway, all right. Why don't you try putting that button in that strap? Well, you're twisted. <laughs> That's the truth of the matter. That is the truth of the matter. And it's cheese making day two. It is. So, what we're going to do this morning 
Uh, Homer wasn't here for all the pressing, so I'm going to have him take Figure it out of the press. Figure that way to get out of it, fellas. Uh, there was work involved. I'm going to take the weight off here. Oh, yeah. And then lift up the arm to the press. I thought he was going to lift that up. He told me he's going to lift it up, but he took it all the way off. And then I'm going to lift it up. Now slide that whole bad thing out of there. And All right. You can't close that door right now. Just put but the they cheese. can't see my good looking put face the up there. You put the cheese over here. It's a little bit wet. It ratio. is. You're all right. It gripped. And then dump out your pan in the sink. Oh, you want or this? Just set this in the sink. Set that in the sink. Yep. Yeah. This a lot of moving here. around. And then you're not gonna loosen your screws over there. I'll do that while you're doing there. this. I'm so that's gonna be this. really hard to get out. A lot of times you'll have to hold the bottom part of the form and pull the gather the cloth and pull the whole thing out before you take that lid off. This was harder than something else I did yesterday. I forgot what I did, but I made cheese yesterday. Yeah. Oh, look at that! You got the follower off. That you had a better time. See, I'm gonna blame that on the fact that. It was sitting in that press overnight, losing a lot of weight. So, uh, it's not as tight as it was. All right. Now you need so, some help getting that, or now I unwrap this? I think we're going to just set this aside for now. I got all right. Up. That's, not That's fancy. You've got that all hooked up. Yep. Now I just pull this whole thing out? Yep. But don't just pull one side. Gather the whole thing up in a bundle at the top. Collector up like a parachute. Yep. All right. I'm going to be in the way here for a hot second. Wash my hands. You know parachutes come with a lifetime guarantee? Yep. Don't collect on them very often on your own. <laughs> so this has been in the press for... You want an extra hand? You got it? I got two. This I is, had an extra one. I paid this pound. This has been in the press for 12 hours now. And it's cheese, but it needs to age. And we have, there's no salt. There's two ways you can do cheese. We'll eat no eat cheese before it's time. Except you saw our cheese cutting video. We cut one open early. Yeah. So we, uh, there's two ways you can salt the cheese. One, you can mix the salt with the curds. Now peel that gently so it doesn't fall apart. And and or you can brine the cheese so last night i made up a gallon of fully saturated brine and that's a gallon of uh of water let's see you told me see if i can get right. my mental powers working with my muscle powers you said one gallon of water you mm -hmm. didn't say this stuff was distilled so regular no, but i boiled it you boiled it so you killed all the bacteria in it mm -hmm. Then you put 2.1 pounds of salt. Yes, sir. Non-iodized salt. I didn't tell him that. Oh, man. He's leaving stuff out. He doesn't want me to go off and do the Homer cheese-making show. And then you said one tablespoon, that's with the B, of the calcium chloride. Yes, sir. And one teaspoon of the vinegar. Yes, sir. And you said that that calcium chloride helps stabilize the calcium so that the water doesn't take it out of the cheese. Correct. And you said the salt helps to slow the aging process, so it yep. doesn't go all real fast on us. Yes, sir. And it also helps to add some flavor to the cheese, mm -hmm. and the water keeps it from being a dry-aged cheese. Correct. All right. I listen. So Homer's going to unwrap this cheese. I'll give you a hand just to speed things up so they don't have to wait around too long. He said this a long cheese-making video because he had to teach Homer. And he is much faster at that. He even stirred 40 minutes worth of stirring in 40 minutes. <laughs> now, can now, I... I'd like to pull it this way a little bit. Just kind of lay it on its side, peel the bottom off. There you go. It should be good and firm by now. That's looking good. Now pick the whole thing up. Which doesn't matter. Top. Doesn't matter. Top okay. or bottom. And I'll get this out of the way. Oh, that feels good already. All this right, feels like a very kind of loose Swiss. Yeah. Set a the spongy. Set the bottom back down. Okay. And I'm gonna grab a knife. You hit my knives on me. I forgot. I did. I cleaned up his kitchen and moved stuff all around. 
you'll never guess where you're going to find his forks. So the uh, edge of this is a little crumbly. I'm going to take my knife around the edge and just kind of do a chamfer around the edge on this top edge. To keep it from crumbling up in there more? Well, it doesn't give as many um, sharp edges for the... You um, said I can eat this. You can. It won't be. It's not salted, so it won't be very flavorful, but it probably just tastes like solid milk right now. Kinda. You're right. So if you leave those edges corners on there, it makes a sharp, like sharp cheddar? Not that kind of sharp. Oh. Sharp like a sharp Like corner. not dull. Yes, sir. Keen. How's that? So we're going to go around here and chamfer this edge a little bit. And it wastes just a little bit of cheese now, but it saves cheese later from getting a bad growth or of mold or anything on it. It's not terribly bad to eat. If you got chickens and ducks like we do, you could feed this to them. You could eat it. You could give it to Miss Muffet because we got plenty of whey. And mm -hmm. we done took away all her curds. So if you get any fluff or anything on there, you want to pick that off. Make sure there's nothing on the outside of it. Beard hairs, come whiskers, up, that kind of come stuff. Come up a little closer. So here's our what will be Swiss or Emmental Swiss cheese. And first we need to put this in the brine. Now I poured a lot of this brine out because this bowl was pretty full. But we're going to set this down in the brine. And then pour this back in. That saves us from having a big mess. Man, you're this a overflows. good pourer too. Horatio, he's the smart one and a good pourer. He's and not poorer than me, though. This is a fully saturated brine. Um, His cheese is And so your cheese floats in a fully saturated brine. And then I'm going to take... Now, if this is floating, you would sprinkle salt on the top if you don't have something to hold it down under. But since I have this lid that fits down inside... Now, here's where the mess comes. Since I have this top that pushes down on the inside when I push this down it's going to hold the cheese underwater and, and make it sub flood. yes and like a submarine our... a cheese submarine yep so we're going to set that in a, down in the sink just so I don't keep making I a mess and driving it. home or not uh, you can use that towel yes home or rip it now depending on the size of your cheese and the weight of your cheese you need to soak that in that brine for different periods of time. The rule of thumb is one inch, I'm sorry, one hour per inch of thickness per pound of cheese. So this cheese is an eight inch, di it, I'm sorry, it's, the diameter doesn't matter. This cheese is four inches thick and it weighs eight pounds. So four times eight is 32. So this has to soak in this brine for 32 hours. Now what I'm going to do is about halfway through that, I'm going to flip it over so, so everything just stays as even as possible. And then um, once that's done, I'll take it out and let it dry, pat it dry with some uh, uh, sterilized towels, and then um, let it continue to air dry in the cheese cave. So um, we'll come back when we're ready to take that out of the brine and then put it in the cheese cave so you see what happens there. That'd be about 32 hours from now. Something I just found interesting didn't come to mind until uh, just a bit ago. Well, now, yesterday, when you had me lifting up that milk, we had eight gallons. It was about 64, a little bit over 69, yeah. 67 pounds, somewhere in there. And now we only got eight pounds of cheese, and I'm sure that whole ratio went over this because he's the smart one. The rest of that's the whey, and there's still some liquid that comes out. And this is really just the fat solids, right? The milk solids. Oh, milk solids. Um, yeah, and a little bit of whey still in there. It would be bone dry. So, and so this what can is you the do whey. That whey makes great livestock feed, not for rabbits, but chickens, pigs, cattle. Um, makes great people feed too. There's a lot of protein in here. Um, 
You've heard Doesn't of, I'm sure good. you've heard of whey protein concentrate. That's uh -huh. just basically dehydrated whey. So um, like those fancy nutrition right. drinks and but stuff. You can, without dehydrating it, you can just make a fruit smoothie out of it. You can, I, I, my favorite thing to do is use it and re, replace the water in a bread recipe with that. And that makes your bread taste kind of like sourdough. Works great for pancakes. Um, not great to drink by itself, but I'm sure if you, you know, added some flavoring to it, you could drink it by itself. But it's good stuff, healthy stuff. You, uh, some people use it to feed their compost. Some people use it to water plants with. So, so the reason I wanted to bring that up is what we're doing here at PC and Homestead is starting to kind of become self-sustaining, using a lot more of the things we have, going, getting them to go a lot farther. And so I would have, you know, in my past days, maybe thrown something away like that and you can you reuse and ex ex mm -hmm. extend the life of a lot of things like that by knowing these things so i'm glad that i got horatio the smart one i'm very proud of my baby brother and i'm happy that he's sharing his knowledge i'm pretty me. proud of this guy too even though he uh he's a little bit of a goofball sometimes <laughs> oh and i, I, I left the out time. A, i left out a big thing you can do with the way is make ricotta cheese so to do that you would bring it up to almost a boil add a whole bunch of vinegar to it and then any of the or almost all of the leftover protein of the milk solids and protein that are still in there that's why this is not clear white or not clear but it's kind of yellowish white that um heat and vinegar cause those to coagulate and then you strain that out and that would be ricotta but that's not a video for today that's a video for another day and we're still and it might be that. a snack the next time around mm -hmm. so we'll come back when it's time to take this out and i'll show you from there all right so it has been Oh, a little over 36 hours when I did the math on this ended up being 8.25 pounds and four and three eighths of an inch thick and to work that out it ended up being um, 36 hours that it needed to soak in the brine so now we just take it out of the brine I have a cheese mat or I think it's probably more I think they're sold as uh, sushi mats, but I put it on the sushi mat. I'm gonna pat it dry with some paper towels. Okay, and now I'm going to let that sit and air dry um, just until morning when I have uh, Homer here and we can put it in the cheese cave and I will return to you, or we will return to you from the cheese cave. Hey Homer, where are you? Over there. You can't tell I'm in the cheese cave. Hey, well come on over there. Watch what you're doing. <laughs> Who put all that stuff there? Oh, there you are. Well, here, take this cheese and set it on one of them shelves over there. It's got to sit there. Where are you? I can barely see you. I, I can't even see you. All right, well. Oh, I feel your cheek. Hey, I, that's I, not I, my cheese. Oh. Watch what you're doing there, buddy. Hey, turn around. There, I got the cheese. Woo. So. <laughs> All right, where you want me to put it now? <laughs> no, just set it on the shelf there to your right. Uh, do I take this mushy schmat with it? Then the sushi mat. Oh, sushi mat. Yeah, leave it on the sushi mat and cover it up just to keep all the dust off with this here bowl. Is it going to stay warm down here? It's going to stay about 55 degrees, and that should keep it where it needs to be for two or three weeks. And then we'll flip it every day for that two or three weeks. Every then, day? i got to come down. In this warm 50 bad degrees. I'm going to have to find you a flashlight and then we'll get it over there and uh, try to see what we can do about finding our way here in the light. That instead would be of doing nice. This in the dark. And then uh, we'll flip it every day and then we'll come back to you folks here and uh, show you what we do from there. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank this you. This is how you leg like update on property. <laughs>